Hello and welcome. Gigolo Travel is in London, United Kingdom. London was founded by Romans around 40 CE. It was originally burned down by a local tribesman. However, after rebuilding it, it progressively evolved. First, it became a capital of Britannia province, later a capital of Kingdom of England, and then a capital of British Empire. These days, it remains one of the most important cities in the world. We will be doing a series of walks using GPS My City app. GPS My City offers 21 self-guided walking tours in London to help you explore the city. Today we will follow the London Introduction Walk. For a full detailed walk, check GPS My City app. Our first stop, Westminster Abbey. Westminster Abbey is a Gothic church in the municipal borough of the city of Westminster. Back in the day, Westminster was a totally separate town from London. The documented origins of the abbey date back to the late 10th century. A century later, during a major reconstruction won by King Edward the Confessor, the church got its Romanesque look, becoming one of the grandest temples in Europe of that period. The Jewel Tower is a three-storey building standing right opposite the Houses of Parliament. This is one of the two surviving parts of the ancient Palace of Westminster. Separated by high walls and a moat that once ran into the Thames and was used for fishing, this tower was unharmed by the Great Fire that destroyed most of the palace in 1834. Big Ben and Houses of Parliament Commonly known as Big Ben, this iconic tower is one of the most dominant objects of London skyline. At the top, there is a four-faced great clock with five bells, the largest of which is called Big Ben, not the tower itself, mind you, and it weighs a staggering 15 tons. This grand bell tolls every hour, while the smaller bells chime every quarter past the hour. Up until 2012, the tower was officially known as the Clock Tower, but was then renamed to Elizabeth Tower for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. Westminster Bridge is one of the many bridges spanning the River Thames in central London. The current structure, created by Thomas Page, dates back to 1862 and replaces the original one built in 1750. Because of its proximity to Houses of Parliament and particularly the House of Commons, the bridge is painted the same green colour as the benches inside the Commons. The Churchill War Rooms is a secret bunker underneath the former Office of Public Information in London, currently the Treasury. From here, Winston Churchill commanded the British forces and recorded radio messages to the nation during World War II. The unassuming entrance at the bottom of Whitehall Clive steps on King Charles Street makes it easy to miss. The Germans never thought anyone would be stupid or brave enough to hide the emergency government in such plain sight. Ten Downing Street, or simply number 10, is the official residence and the office of British Prime Minister. It has been UK's number one address for almost 300 years. The building contains over 100 rooms and was once three separate houses, now combined.
Just a short walk away, there is Bankton House in London's Whitehall. It is the grandest and best known survivor of the architectural genre of Bankton House, the only remaining component of the Palace of Whitehall. Built in 1622 in neoclassical style, it marked a new transformation step in the history of English architecture. 27 years later, in January 1649, King Charles I of England was executed right in front of his building on a scaffold. Today, the Bankton House is listed as National Monument, open to the public. The House of Cavalry Museum is one of London's most historic buildings. It dates back to 1750 and houses the headquarters of the Household Division, in which the Household Cavalry has been performing the Queen's Lifeguard daily ceremony and it is largely unchanged for over 350 years now. The cavalry itself was formed in 1661 by direct order of King Charles II and presently consists of two senior regiments of British Army, the Lifeguards and the Blues and Royals. The place offers a unique opportunity to observe real troopers doing their daily chores, among which is working with horses in the original 18th century stable. Heading west up the Strand to Trafalgar Square, one can't help but notice the Admiralty Arch. This arch is one of the most photographed buildings in London and marks the outset of another major street, the Mall, leading straight to Buckingham Palace, the residence of the British monarch. The Admiralty Arch was commissioned by King Edward VII in memory of his late mother, Queen Victoria. Sadly, the king never lived to see it finished as he himself died before it was completed in 1911. The building adjoins the old Admiralty, from which it takes the name. Trafalgar Square is the number one square in Britain and is as close as you can get to the heart of London. Charing's Cross, the small traffic island south of Trafalgar, is technically where all distances to London are measured from. Speaking of measures, the Imperial Standard measures used in the UK prior to 1965, such as inches, feet, yards, links, chains, perches and poles, are all found in Trafalgar Square as well. In 1876, they were installed in the Northern Terrace Wall, but in 2003 were relocated behind the cafe and placed along the steps, after the north side of the square was made pedestrian. The National Gallery is a popular attraction visited annually by up to 6 million people. It houses one of the greatest collections of Western European art in the world, spanning from year 1250 until 1700. This includes the works of Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Picasso, Van Gogh and many other greats. Established by British government in 1824, the National Gallery started off with just slightly over 30 paintings or so. Today it boasts a collection of more than 2,500 pieces, two-thirds of which are private donations, and the rest have been acquired with donated funds, including 50 million from Sir Paul Getty. Some of this cash has been used to expand the building, such as the Sainsbury Wing, constructed in 1985. Established in 1856, this gallery promotes through the portraits of the men and women who made mark in the British history and culture. Pursuant to this goal, the gallery boasts the world's largest collection of portraits, including caricatures, drawings, paintings and sculptures, selected not for their author's greatness or technical excellence, but for the unique feeling they create. Piccadilly Circus was originally built as a junction between Regent Street and Piccadilly in 1819. Back then it was a circle roundabout up until 1886, when Shaftesbury Avenue was built and the circle was gone. 
The name Piccadilly derives from one of the shops once present in the area, called Piccadilly Hall. Its owner, Robert Baker, was a tailor who specialized in making certain colors known as Piccadils, hence the name. St. James's Park is a 23 hectare park in Westminster and is one of the oldest royal parks of London. Both the park and the surrounding area are named after a leper hospital dedicated to St. James the Less, the Bishop of Jerusalem. It stood here from around 1180s up until 1531 when it was demolished for the construction of St. James's Palace. To the west of the park is Buckingham Palace. For that reason, the park is never short of visitors coming to see the royal residence. Buckingham Palace is the official London residence of the British monarch. Prior to becoming a palace, it was Buckingham House, a large townhouse built for the Duke of Buckingham in 1703. In 1761, King George III acquired this property as a private home for Queen Charlotte. It finally became the official royal residence under Queen Victoria in 1837. It was also Victoria who started the tradition of the royal showing up on the balcony when she appeared there for the first time during the opening of the Great Exhibition at Hyde Park in 1851. During the Blitz in 1941, the palace chapel was destroyed by a bomb and when reconstruction began, it was decided not to rebuild the chapel but to create a royal museum so that people could see items from the royal collection. The gallery was opened to the public in 1962 in total, it has over 450 items displayed at any given time on a rotational basis – clothing, decorative art, furniture, paintings, photographs, porcelain and sculptures. Hyde Park is one of the largest royal parks in London and a home to several attractions. The most notable of them is the Speaker's Corner on the northeast side near Marble Arch. This platform for campaigners, preachers and those seeking to express their views on a variety of subjects, all except criticizing the Queen of course, has been in place since the mid-1800s. Among the historic figures to have spoken here at the time are Karl Marx, Vladimir Lenin and George Orwell. We hope you enjoyed this walking tour of London and we are looking forward for you to join us on our next adventure in the near future. Take care guys!